at City Field in New York. The New York Mets play the Washington Nationals. Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep now celebrating its 75th anniversary by Geico the number one insurer in the New York market by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center dedicated to advancing cancer research treatment and care more science less fear by Cadillac visit tristatecadillac.com for exceptional offers and by city learn about city perks at Mets.com slash city. Well, the first place Nationals are back in town, and that may, means a return of old friend Daniel Murphy leading the way for the first place Nats, who lead the Mets by nine and a half games in the standings. Mets may not have first place on their mind, but they've got other goals that they try and hunt down the Nats this weekend. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets open a three-game series against the Nationals. The Nats have won 9 of 13 meetings from the Mets so far this year, and the primary reason is the former Met, Daniel Murphy, whom the Mets have had awful problems getting out since the beginning of the season. Well, he's hitting well over 400 against the Mets with seven home runs and 21 RBI. That's just against the Mets. Now, in the league, he just, he's just he been leading the league in hitting most of the year. He has slipped Second place, still hitting 341, uh, second in the National League behind LeMahieu. Uh, 98 RBIs. I've always felt, Gary, that Daniel was a number three hitter all those years here as a Met. Well, he went over to Washington. He started out hitting fifth. He hit fourth. He's hit third. He's got 98 RBIs on the season. 30 of them, that's number two in the National League, are go-ahead RBIs. It has just been an incredible season for him, a very clutch season. He, it's either he or Chris Bryant for their, in the running for the National League MVP. Well, he's certainly a prime candidate after his teammate Bryce Harper won the MVP last year. You went into the season thinking Harper was the guy he had to focus on. Now it's Murph, so for a Mets staff that hasn't been able to get Murph out, how do they approach him? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am so sick and tired of the fusive praise. The fusive praise for Daniel Murphy. That's a place to start. I know unlike other teams he's worn out the National League but unlike other teams he's got a relationship with this team. So how do you stop that. Well obviously he's very comfortable at the plate. I would start there. I would make it sure every single at bat in this three game series he is uncomfortable especially inside. On a day when there's even more uncertainty about Jacob DeGrom's status in the Mets rotation Noah Syndergaard will take the ball and it goes without saying right now the Mets have to win every time Syndergaard takes them out. Yeah they do and uh, he, he has uh, lived up to that billing in his last three starts but especially the last two eight innings with only two hits in San Francisco and seven innings with only two hits against Philadelphia. Steven Strasburg may return from the DL for the Nats next week but for now A.J. Cole is in his spot on the rotation. Well it's his third start he had a good one in Baltimore so so in his last start but they're looking for this guy sinker and a good slider to get them through six or seven innings. Third big league start of the year for Cole he matches up against Syndergaard in the opener of the weekend series the start of the long lay Labor Day weekend. It's the Mets and the Nats. All the action on SNY.
to you by Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll only find in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Take advantage of a special Coca-Cola combo offer and select seating areas during all remaining Mets home games. Tickets start at just $19 and include a $10 food and beverage credit so you can cheer on the Mets while enjoying your favorite Coca-Cola products. Tickets for this offer are only available at Mets.com slash combo. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealers. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile this afternoon. John Lester carried a no-hitter for six and two-thirds innings against the Giants, finished with a complete game three-hitter as the Cubs beat the Giants for the second straight day, two to one. Lester now 15 and four with a 2.61 earned run average. The Cubs are now 40 games over 500. They have their largest lead since 1907. Noah Syndergaard set to throw the first pitch. That's coming up. How much damage has Daniel Murphy done against his former team? Well, Murphy has 21 RBIs against the Mets. Last player with that many the first year after he got traded against his old team, Roger Maris, in 1960, at 27 RBIs wow. against the Kansas City Athletics. Ah. And Murphy still has six games against the Mets to build his total. Noah Syndergaard will try and keep. Him and the rest of the Nats down and trying to control the running game better than he has in the past against Washington. National starting lineup. No Ryan Zimmerman. He's been back from the disabled list for a couple of weeks, but has not been hitting. So Clint Robinson will get the start. Trey Turner has been a huge spark plug since the All Star break, playing just about every day and now playing center field. And Turner leading off at the top of that Nats lineup. Well Gary you mentioned the running game so I think there's just three things that are key for Noah tonight his year long work of trying to hold runners close to be put to the test tonight he needs earlier contacting the game to keep 
his pitch countdown and when he gets ahead of hitters he's got to put them away last two starts against Washington 0 and 2 the ERA close to 10. And we'll slip in the old Lexus Metropolitan defense. Curtis Granderson, uh, Conforto, had a nice double to left center field. Hit the ball hard twice last night, but he's on the pine. Reyes continues to shine. Cabrera continues to shine. Kelly Johnson continues to shine. And Wilmer on that infield. And Rivera, of course, always catches big Noah. Trey Turner lays things off, and Syndergaard's first pitch is fouled away, and we're underway. Turner's 42nd start, and you see the numbers. Just 23 years old, drafted two years ago out of NC State by the Padres and traded to the Nationals. Syndergaard gets ahead of Mullen, too. Well, I like to see that pitch against the righties on the second pitch already. Syndergaard running that ball in on the righty. Jason Worth on deck, and then Daniel Murphy for the Nats. And Turner floats one into shallow right field, and that's going to fall for a base hit. And so the Nats have a leadoff base runner. Turner hitting an 0 2 pitch and dumping it into right field. And a very speedy, oh, inside outs there and a fastball in. Not a bad pitch. Just kind of dunks it out there, a little Texas leaguer. And we're going to take a look right now what these Nats are going to do. 18 stolen bases for this young man in only 44 games, caught three times. Turner is one of the fastest players in the game. Now, Syndergaard's been doing a much better job lately holding runners. His last two starts against the Phillies and the Giants. First of all, he a lot very few base runners, but only one steal in three attempts. And Turner runs first pitch. Rivera's throwing a hop. Does not get there in time, and Turner has a stolen base. His 19th of the year. Well, we know what's going to happen in this uh, game tonight. Not, not even messing around, Keith. Gets the oven mitt on the bag in time. 19 stolen bases for Turner, a Nationals rookie record. Not a franchise record, but a Nationals record. So that goes back to 2005. Here's the jump. Good acceleration. It's all about the first two, three steps. Actually, the first two. So that's the 42nd steal against Syndergaard in 48 tries. 2 0 to Jason Worth, who's hitting 251 for the year. And that's on the corner, 2 and 1. Well, it's not even close. Syndergaard has given up by far the most stolen bases of any pitcher in the National League. Turner takes off for third. He got an enormous oh, jump. Oh boy, here we go. Syndergaard did not pay him any mind. And Turner got a nice hopping lead off second base and has his 20th steal. Well, what was interesting is Cabrera looked like he was going to do the daylight play if he would have just waited, but he couldn't. Wow, he can just, he just like shut it down to third gear there. He had it so easy. So just like that, a runner at third with nobody out. The Mets have the infield back. Three and one to Worth. And he fouls it away three and two. Yeah. Was, don't worry. Let's just get the hitter. <laughs> Almost like Big Daddy Don Garlitz, the old drag racer. Stealing bases. Out of the shoot. Quarter mile. Three and two to Worth. And the breaking ball line and caught by Cabrera for the first down of the night. Remember, Worth got off to a terrible start. He and Rendon this season. And they've got their season back in order. Nice play by the sure handed Cabrera. Here's Daniel Murphy with one out and a runner at third. Murphy's fallen to second in the batting race behind DJ LeMayhew of the Rockies. 
We're hitting 341 on the year. Leads the league in slugging percentage, leads the league in doubles. Infield back with one out. And he takes a fastball off the corner for ball one. Up the middle, Cabrera. Big pull. It would have been very interesting, and I know it just doesn't happen in today's game. But here's a guy that has just worn you out. And you got a big hundred mile an hour gasser right there. Just how about first pitch either in the ribs or on his back and just set the tone for the whole series. Both you want to fight? Let's go fight. Those, both those pitches away from Thor. And I like Daniel, but you know, this is war out here. Well, I think when you compare Murph this year to Murph in the past, he's much more able to turn on the inside pitch, which is think the right pitcher is fearful of working him inside. Right, pitch him away, play him away if you want to try to go deep, because Murph has hit seven home runs now against this ball club. You know, if you want to try to hit long ball, then here's the ball away, try to pull it. Seven of his 25 home runs this year, easily a career high. 14 last year had been his career high. Turner at third and one out, and Murphy takes a fastball outside. It's three and one. Bryce Harper on deck. While Murphy is having a career year, Bryce Harper is having the opposite. I think it's important to note on Murphy's year, too, a thing that gets overlooked. Only 51 strikeouts. That's outstanding. He doesn't walk much either. He usually put the ball in the game to play early on. He chases the changeup with the uh, fastball away. It's three and two. Sinker from Syndergaard. Well, you know, Garrett, when he's got 31 walks and he's hitting 341 and he's driven in 98, hit 25 home runs, 38 doubles. Swing the bat. Whatever he's doing is right. Yeah. Three two coming. And he walked him. 99 a long way. And so now the Nats have first and third and one out and Harper coming up. When we mentioned the uh, Jacob deGrom situation, the Mets have just put out a statement about deGrom saying they had a precautionary MRI on his elbow today. No structural damage, has soreness in the elbow, will take medication, will resume throwing when the discomfort subsides, and is likely to miss his next start. Great. So that's the deal with DeGrom and so the Mets are now down to Syndergaard and Cologne. So now you've got Mats that's missed two starts and now DeGrom. Of the six that the Mets thought they were going to go to war with this year the original five yeah. of Wheeler they're now down to two. And it's interesting that the only two left standing are Syndergaard out there right there and the 43 year old Cologne. Here's Harper. And he takes a fastball for a strike. You can look across the board with Harper and his numbers are all down from his MVP season last year. But how about this? Last year had a slugging percentage of 649. This year 464. Nearly 200 points lower in his slugging percentage than last year. And I'll make a note here, Gary, make a statement. I think his season got completely discombobulated when he went into that Chicago series and they walked started walking him intentionally I think that flustered him he didn't know how to handle it and I think it's affected his season and he hasn't been able to regroup they walked him 13 times in that four game series well he's drawn 93 walks this year which is third in the league but his batting average is down more than 80 points from last year and he's been a little bit hotter lately the batting average was even lower. He's hitting 333 over the last 18 games, so he's perked up a bit. Syndergaard could use a strikeout. And Harper fouls it away. It's a couple of pitches now, 0 2, that have been just too good. The one to Turner wasn't bad uh, because he fought it off to go to right field, but that's too good of a pitch, 0 2. Anthony Rendon hitting fifth in the order on deck. Syndergaard making his first start as a 24 year old who celebrated a birthday on Monday facing the 23 year old Bryce Harper. You got to pitch Harper when you pitch him away up and away and he'll chase the one that runs out of the strike zone above the letters. Not down. 
gets one out to center field. Tagging at third is Turner. Granderson coming in is pretty shallow, but Turner's got great speed, and Granderson's throw to the plate is not in time. Syndergaard backs it up so that Murphy can't advance. Sacrifice fly for Harper gives the Nationals a one nothing lead. All those pitches away, he came in and jammed them, but Harper strong enough to get it up in the air. Granderson a decent throw, but it's not going to get this. The fleet footed Turner. Not too many people score on a fly ball of that depth. <laughs> Where were the, I, I loved it when I had Mookie in front of me like that. So the stolen bases for Turner pay off in a run. Stole second, stole third, scores on the sack fly by Harper. And the Nats played an early run. Murphy at first with two down. And here's Rendon, who's been red hot lately. Last 34 games, hitting 331, back to being the Rendon. That we saw a couple of years ago before he started battling injuries. Missed half of last season with a knee injury and an oblique injury. Interesting, always Syndergaard after he retrieves the throw back from the catcher, always puts a tug on his hip, on his belt buckle, and pulls up his pants. Maybe you should just make the belt tighter. Look, look at Texas Cowboy, right? <laughs> when his Wranglers. There goes Murphy. And no throw by Rivera. And Murphy has a stolen base, just his fourth of the year. Third stolen base in the opening inning for the Nationals, who have been off and running against the Mets since the first day of spring training. Well, we showed that shot of Rene Rivera saying, no big deal, just got the hitter. Well, it is a big deal. Trey Turner plates a run now Murphy in scoring position. Just give me a sign. Are they stealing? <laughs> oh and two to Rendon. Just inside. Twenty two pitches deep in this opening inning. Well, that was a good old two pitch there. Outstanding execution. A gap to gap hitter, right center to left center. Got a little bit of pop to keep you honest. Got off to such a slow start this year. You see the numbers that I said the last two starts, his first four can't get much better. He gave up two hits to the Giants, two hits to the Phillies in his last two starts. And the curve ball lifted to left center. Overcomes Cespedes to call. And that retires the side, but the stolen bases lead to a run. The Nats strike first and lead 1 0 as the Mets come to bat.
Mets this year, but they haven't had Jose Reyes in any of those games. And he will lead off for the Mets in their Geico starting lineup. Cabrera and Cespedes both sat last night, although Cabrera came off the bench and hit a pinch hit home run. They're both back in the lineup tonight. No Michael Conforto as Curtis Granderson gets the call in center field. Kelly Johnson playing second base. Neil Walker now out for the season. And that's what the Mets will throw out tonight against A.J. Cole making his third start of the season. Well, seventh ranked Nats prospect coming into the season. 46 and 39 in the minor leagues came over to the Nats from the Oakland A's in the Michael Morse trade. Originally drafted by the Nats, they traded him in the Gio Gonzalez trade and then got him back a little over a year later. Reyes was 7 for 19 in the series against Miami. And he takes a strike from Cole. And if that's 90 miles an hour, I will not say I'm a man on the moon, but well, that's, Cole, not, that's not 90 miles an hour. I'm sorry. Not a hard thrower. And that's just a flat slider to it. I mean a slat, flat sinker. I, I wouldn't even call that a sinker. It's a runner. Spent most of this year Triple A with Syracuse, gave up more hits than innings pitched, eight and eight with a 4.26 ERA. He's made the last two turns in the rotation in place of Steven Strasburg, who's had a barking elbow, but they think will return to the rotation next week. Off the fists of Reyes. So a 10 mile an hour difference between that little cutter slider of Cole and his fastball. As Dribble Cabrera on deck, then he went as Cespedes for the Mets. That's so seeing Cole for the first time in the regular season. And he runs that one in on the hands of Reyes and he fouls it off. Did you see that ball? It's still spinning. It's still spinning. And oh, cut. knocked the cover off it. Still knocked spinning the cover cut. off the ball. I saw Dave Parker do that in St. Louis, believe it or not, when Parker was the two time batting champion in the height of his career off Pete Falcone, Gary. I kid you not. He had a line drive, spin the bottle. We now get to see spin rates on thrown pitches. Do we get to see the spin rate on the hit oh, ball off the end of the bat? That is bizarre. It's I've like never I have never seen that. It's like Goes up and away to strike out Reyes for the first out. Coors Light defense, your Nats, pretty good corner outfielders, both with terrific arms out there, quality defenders. On the infield, Danny Espinosa really having a not an average a, a, a offensively hitting 220s, which is what he is. But he's got 20 home runs this year. That's big for him. And Wilson Ramos, the ex-Met, he's been in a little bit of a slump. They say he's a bit tired, but doesn't he always seem to get hits and hurt the Mets. Here's Cabrera taking outside ball one. And his dribble has been just remarkable since returning from the disabled list. Hit his first pinch hit home run in his career last night, hitting 419 since returning from the DL. Five home runs in the 13 games. So no mystery to Cole. He's running the fastball away from you and flat. trying to throw the cut slider in on your hands. It's in flat. Yeah. Bring it to Cabrera. You see the uh, gold wristbands that a lot of the players are wearing. Some are wearing gold ribbons as well. That is in uh, support of pediatric cancer research. Was particularly um, impactful watching John Lester and Anthony Rizzo wear those this afternoon. Both are cancer survivors. Rizzo was talking about the best news he ever got uh, was when he was cleared of his cancer. Not to be drafted. Full count to Cabrera. Who put in some time with the Nationals a couple of years ago. Played second base, right? That down the stretch for them. Zaspidis on deck. He's got the gold and the canary. They clash. That's pulled into right field, and Cabrera's got a base hit. Well, Cabrera continues to perform. Well, his knee may not be 100%, but his back sure is. 
You know, Keith, the one thing about a fa fastball that just runs, it stays right along the length of the bat the entire time it's coming to the plate, and most big league hitters can center it. Um, I always like someone that was always on the same plane horizontally. Wherever it started, it stayed at that level. It was very easy to track. Jair Cespedes, who was limited to pinch hitting duty last night, back in the lineup tonight. Hitting 356 since returning for the DL and takes a strike from Cole. Cespedes so starts the night fourth in the National League in slugging percentage. Starting to throw Cespedes fastballs, Ronnie, and getting ahead. And you know, we know that all good hitters love the breaking ball. And uh, all good hitters don't like to be crowded, but they've been starting to pound Cespedes with some heaters. You know, the theme in those Miami wins were if Miami scored, the Mets would come right back in that first inning. Played just a little over the equivalent of a full season as a Met, 163 games now. And nobody's ever hit more home runs in his first 162 as a Met than Cespedes had. Oh. He's been good, and you know, I've said it many times, he's their best base runner, too, Gary. Smartest base runner. See if he gets a chance to show it. Slider off the plate one and two. He's saying that Cespedes sometimes reminds me. This is going back, guys, in the 60s. But the toy cannon, Jimmy Wynn. Yeah. But there's nothing toy about Cespedes. No, he's a big guy, powerful, not tall, but strong. Into center field, Turner coming on, and gets there. Two out. Trey Turner had been a career infielder until. Right before the All Star break this year, they played him in half a dozen games in the minor leagues in center field, brought him to the big leagues, stuck him in center, and he's done a nice job there. It's pretty remarkable, isn't it, that uh, how uh, quick he's caught on, but, you know, he's, he's a great athlete, great speed. Think about the irony, right? The Nationals had a shortstop last year who's now playing center field very effectively in Texas, Ian Desmond, and they've taken another middle infielder in, moved him to center field, and he's doing well also. Turn it cost him a little less than Desmond would have. So far, <laughs> just wait. Here's Jay Bruce. Bruce homered last night. It's 28th of the year. It's looked a lot better the last few games. Five for 11 in the last three that he's played. His home run last night was his third as a Met. Fifth in the league in both home runs and RBIs. Gets the fastball in one and one. Well, the Mets are still technically chasing the Nationals in the National League East, but they're nine and a half games back with 28 to play, and the odds are certainly not in their favor. That's toward the middle of the diamond, and a nice backhand play, and a beautiful flip by Murphy and by a Rendon, and they get the out. Now was Espinoza going behind the bag and making that backhand flip to Rendon. No bare hand necessary. Notice how he had the open glove. Beautiful play.
Wilson Ramos leads off the second inning against Noah Syndergaard. And that's with a one nothing lead. His bat has cooled down over the last month, but still having a career year, hitting at 312 with 20 home runs. Maybe some of it's from playing every day. I mean, last year he hit 229 for the full season. Last year was his first truly healthy season in his career, and he's come back this year with an incredible year. Your timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. Some networks would think they'd have to do it to musings by Jack Candy. You just throw a shot up there. Perfect. Deep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and we chose to show it a second time. That's how timeless it is. We, we could show it again later, it would still be timeless. Syndergaard so far throwing a lot more two seams two seam fastball. No good cut right on that. He reminds me a little bit and we've mentioned it before but. A little bit love like Andres Galarraga for this swing. Ramos pulls one foul. Might be hard for fans to remember, but Galarraga was a, a bigger version of Ramos. Six two. 245, 50 pounds. And a national hero in Ramos's native Venezuela. The big cat. It's not the original big cat. Right. It was Johnny Mize. He was, you're right about that. And he was, uh, he was uh, El Grande Gato. There you go. <laughs> he could pick it at first base for a big guy. He was very agile. It was very deceptive. His agility. A terrific guy, too. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming to Ramos. And he goes down swinging on the high fastball. First strike out of the night for Syndergaard. Well, he was trying to dot the outside corner, and that ball just exploded up and in on Ramos, fooling him. So sometimes you don't hit your spot, but you still get some payoff. So when the sports writers write he made only one mistake because he gave up a home run it's usually not true silly. <laughs> it's Clint Robinson. He didn't get away with only one mistake. That's what they really should write. Oh, I mean good pitchers a lot of times it's hard to tell between a good game and a bad game. Robinson playing first base tonight in part because he's got good numbers against Syndergaard two for six with a couple of home runs. Ryan Zimmerman's been back. From his latest stint on the DL for about two weeks. But he's sitting tonight. First changeup we've seen from Syndergaard so far. What do you got Zimmerman at? Three for 36, I think, is what he's mired in. Well, he's had two different DL stints the last two months. He's just, you know, his whole career seems to be going that way these days. That's will have no sympathy with the number of mm. players that they've seen go by the wayside this year. Well, he stands so far away from the plate and he has not made any adjustments, and as he's gotten older, what I've seen, he can't cover the outside corner, Zimmerman. You know, you got to make a an adjustment. Robinson hits one back to Syndergaard. Two out.
Good pitch here. Fastball in, ties him up. Easy play for Syndergaard. So two out and nobody on. Now Danny Espinosa. Espinosa with terrific power from both sides of the plate. 20 home runs this year. Flies this one to shallow right. And Bruce comes in to get it. And that retires the side. So Syndergaard with a 1 2 3 second. Still timeless. <laughs> Oh, you can tell the story. You know where I'm going. Well, I came here and uh, I was, was a freshman, and we're just we're just we're introducing ourselves, and so they ask, you know, what's your name, what position you play, and of course, being the 18-year-old idiot that I am, I told him my name was Daniel Murphy, and I bat third. And I have been seconding that motion for many years. Well, Flores pops one up. To start the home second, Espinosa goes out to get it. One out. Well, the funny thing is, for much of his tenure as a Met, Murph kind of backed away from that and yes. really enjoyed the idea of being a third hitter, even though he had had that sentiment years ago when he went to college. Well, Terry Collins mentioned to me, uh, just, just having casual conversation, that Murph was uncomfortable taking over the third hole from David Wright, which I think is ridiculous. Um, you know, if it's Stan Musial and you're taking over from Stan Musial, well, okay, that's a different program, but um, a little more pressure. But I always felt that Daniel was a clutch hitter and he should never have hit second. He should have always been in an RBI spot in the order. To me, it was either third, um, to me, preferably third and fifth. By the way, you noticed in that BP from 2008, he was hitting everything in left field. That's right. He's changed. Yes, he's, he has. he's stubborn. But uh, I do think that Kevin Long got it got connected with Daniel and I think um, got him to pull last year and remember when you all of a sudden are hitting one way in the majority of your career years which is pretty much a way away away and all of a sudden you change and you start pulling you're going to surprise a lot of guys for quite some time and the pitchers will catch on and then and then you the whole ball game changes. 
then it becomes cat and mouse. Mm. Well, it's really since late last season, and so you're talking about almost an entire year. Yep. And so far, they haven't caught on. That's exactly right. I was thinking maybe the way they connect it is, you know, Kevin Long's all about uh, lives and breathes and sleeps hitting. So does Murph. Anderson gets tied up and fouls it off. I just think this was a perfect storm for Daniel. It's not morning, so sailors don't be where it's night. So it's your delight. Um. <laughs> Anderson pokes one out to center and Turner circles in. Two out. Come out to City Field tomorrow. The Mets play the Nats. Final fireworks night of 2016 presented by Empire City Casino. After the game, you can enjoy an exciting fireworks show that will light up the night sky. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash fireworks. Okay. So I getting back to the perfect storm for Daniel. A new ball club, years with the Mets, veteran, knows he belongs, gets a new challenge, a new team. Uh, Dusty Baker puts him in the in the key roles in the lineup and it's it's a new it's a shot of adrenaline uh, like, a, like a new tr a blood transfer uh, transfusion and so I'm not surprised that Daniel is having this 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 MVP season. You know Keith one more thing we can add is that after that great postseason get the Mets of the World Series. Um, a lot of teams did not bite and he sat out there as a free agent for a long time. Got a large chip on his shoulder. I think that's a great point. And Terry Collins brought that up tonight that he was shocked that nobody took a flyer on Murph earlier in the postseason after the Mets had made him the qualifying offer and he turned it down. Um, but obviously the Nats got themselves what looks like an enormous bargain once they jumped into the fire. Johnson pops one up into left center and overcomes Worth. Easy inning for A.J. Cole. Three pop-ups. Three outs. After two at City Field, Nats one. Mets nothing. Premium. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. MLB.TV Premium includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Pitcher AJ Cole leads off against Syndergaard in the third. First big league hit. He had a brief stint with the Nats last year. One start, two relief out. So 
He's had four at bats in his career. Trey Turner on deck, then Jason Worth for the Nats in the third. And Cole with a late swing foul oh. and almost took out the first base umpire Eric Cooper. He does a stumbling dance to avoid getting drilled. Also, your limbo champion in the winter. Um, well, the ball followed him. Oh, under the armpit. Raise your hand if you're sure. <laughs> Always looking for a marketing thing. <laughs> Syndergaard strikes out Cole. Second strikeout of the night for Syndergaard. Well, one of the reasons the Nats have a nine and a half game lead over the Mets is their ability to beat up on the rest of the division. Look at that. 22 and 6 against the Braves and Phillies, while the Mets are 12 and 11 against those teams. And that pretty much is the difference between the Nats at 23 games over 500 and the Mets at yep. four games over You're 500. Right. That's right. Remember back in the beginning of the season when we knew that there were going to be some teams in the National League that were going to be non competitive. And maybe that's overstating the case with the Phillies, who've yeah. been better than people expected. But oh. as that comes inside, hits Turner, or did it hit the no, bat? Got the bat. bat. Hit the bat. One and one. That it was going to be important, as the Mets did last year, to beat up on those teams if you wanted to be. The champion of your division. Right. And that's what the Nats have done and the Mets have not. We stated that in spring training, Gary. Turner went around on the half swing and it's one and two. That's that two seamer run? Yeah, that's the one you want him to throw more, and he I, has been of late. I like it. It's a pitch that he got away from. He got into really trying to dot the corners with that four seamer and slider. This pitch he can get a little more earlier contact. He's a little cut and slasher this Turner, huh? Stays level. First look at him. You know, he reminds me of a little bit in the day, Bobby Denier. Remember how he used to go up there, kind of cutting and slashing all that speed? Welcome back, Grounder. Reyes gets rid of it quickly. Two out. Well, they just stayed in on his hands that entire bat. So Syndergaard's now retired seven in a row. And now Jason Worth, who lined out to short his first time up. The running game jumped up and bit Syndergaard in the first inning tonight. Three stolen bases for the Nats. Well. One way to stop it is not let anybody get on base. So I guarantee you, if they just, get on base, they're gonna gonna say that they're gonna go. What what did Cedarstrom just pick up there? He's laughing. I think it was a piece of a uh, bat. Turner's bat. <laughs> he pointed it out before the game tonight. Gary Cedarstrom behind the plate. Adrian Johnson umpiring at third. June 1st, 2012. That's right. Same two in the same spot. From Mr. Santana. 134 pitch effort. And a foul ball. Oh, yes. A gratuitous call. Worth drives one to right center field, chasing back Granderson to the warning track. He runs it down. Curtis continues to play a very good center field. Got a good jump on that ball and ran down a potential extra base hit from Worth. Eight in a row for Syndergaard, still one nothing Nats.
Verizon trivia question. 1984 December 10th which four players to the Mets trade to the Expos for Gary Carter. Oh. Okay. I'm writing it down. See if you get it. I got it. I got it. We all know it's once the big one was Hubie. Yeah I got two of the others. You have all three. Big right hand pitcher wasn't no. it. No. Yeah 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 young kids yeah. Outfielder. Outfielder and a and catcher. The, oh, the catcher. Catcher. Right yeah. Got you know, Hubie went on to play shortstop for the Expos and drove in 100 runs, I believe, in '85. Had a great year. I think you're right. He had some really good years up there and with the Dodgers and came back with, to the Mets in 1991. Rene Rivera hitting at 228. Has four hits in his last three starts. AJ Coles allowed just one base runner through the first two innings. And Rivera stops the swing on the slider, two and two. Is he throwing anything but a fastball and a slider? No, that's all he throws. He it's runs all, it in, nope. runs it away. He told us he threw a curveball, but I guess we haven't seen that tonight. Away. 93 is where he's topped out. They said he threw 95 in the minors earlier this year, but maybe later in the season, not quite getting there. Rivera slices one down the line, and that'll go out of play. He locates well, Ron. He pitches at the corners. He's had it down so far, but um, really hard to go through a lineup three or four times with two pitches. And, and not too overpowering pitches, unless you got a the old splitter. Splitter is a was the great equalizer. The splitter, a tough pitch. Syndergaard wants a scouting report before his at bat. <laughs> Looking to break a record, you know. It's tied with Seaver and Terrell. Terrific. Three home runs in a season. He's also trying to chase down another Seaver record. Seaver had seven extra base hits. In 72, Syndergaard's got six. Tom will be the first one to tell you, too. Yes, he will. <laughs> and Rivera now tips it, held on to by Ramos for Cole's second strikeout of the night. Well, on the top of the inning, Curtis Granderson going away to make a nice grab against Worth. Top of your screen, Curtis, watch the break. And he can run. He can still fly, Curtis. It's all about getting there. Keith, has he surprised you with how well he's played center field? No, not at all. Uh, he can still run, and as we said, Gary, the corner outfield positions are the ones where you can't get a good read off the bat. Center field is much like the middle infielders, the second and short. You can get a good read and a good feel where the ball is going to go off the, off the swing. It is more difficult. Syndergaard pops one behind third. And Rondon grabs it two out. It is more difficult for the for the corner outfielders to pick off to pick up a line drive that's pulled. And therefore, what I mean is a right hand hitter pulling a ball to the left fielder. That's a hard one to read. Is it down the line? Is it is it the gap or is it right at me? And conversely, left hand hitter pulling the ball to a right fielder. But those are the tough reads right there. Mm. Well I'd have to say there's some smattering of ignorance from my seat because I'm one of those that did not think that Curtis Granderson will be able to play center field every day and he's not playing it every day but he has been fantastic in center. Absolutely dead wrong for me. Well at some point in the coming days we're going to see some more of Michael Conforto playing center field as well. It'll be interesting to see how he's developed there. Remember when uh, the Mets first put him in center field and he had that, uh, that diving catch he made? Right in Miami, right? Yep. Branch rolls one to the right side. Murphy makes the play and Cole keeps on rolling. He's now retired eight in a row. After three at City Field, one nothing Washington.
Well, tweet us at SNY TV. Who do you think will win the National League MVP this season? A couple of Cubs, Rizzo and Bryant. Arenado's got what 119 RBIs yes. already, and of course Murphy. Maybe we leave out there who's a candidate. I don't think so. Murph yeah. walked and stole a base in the first inning. Syndergaard starts the fourth with a fastball for a strike. There were some no names earlier in the year, thinking of Matt Carpenter for St. Louis and others, but they've dropped off. Say, who's had an unbelievable second half and has pulled down to first. And nice. nice snag by Flores. Syndergaard over to cover for the out. Nicely done by Wilmer to retire Murphy. Well, that saves a double right there. Pitch Murph away. First at bat, came inside in this one. Wilmer playing right on the line. That helps. We're close to the line. He was close. Mm. Bryce Hopper, Harper getting some booze. How about that? Well, he provokes a reaction wherever he goes. Oh, what did he ever do? <laughs> he does scowl. You know, he has that expression on his face. He's a scowl. He also is outspoken about a lot of things that I think draw both positive and negative attention. Harper drove in the only run of this game with a sack fly. I was going to say the guy who's had a big second half that, that it's not going to be noticed yeah. at all because his team is terrible and we'll see him in a few days is Joey Bottom. Yeah. He's had an incredible second half. Uh, he's out tonight though, stiff neck. Maybe we won't see him in a couple of days. <laughs> Might be to the Mets' benefit. Change up from Syndergaard and got the half swing on Harper, nothing in two. Did Votto decide to swing the bat the second half of the season? Yeah. He's hitting. He's very stubborn, you know, with that walk and on base percentage. I think, let me pull up his second half numbers just yeah. so you can see. Because he is a hitter. Uh, if I'm managing, I want Joey, swing the bat, please. Well, you know, he had Bruce with him the first half, and Bruce had the huge first half. Now without Bruce behind him in the lineup, it changes the equation for Bottom. Well, those are his last two starts, about as good as you can get. Well, it was a big start in San Francisco, Ronnie. Yeah, two hits in both. Harper gets booed because he's the best player on your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. That's why he gets booed. Outside here are the numbers on Votto since the All Star break 43 games. He's hitting 423. Okay. 516 on base percentage. 678 78 slugging. Eight home runs. 36 RBI. Uh, uh, how many games? 40 43. Uh, 36 RBI. How many how many at bats here? 149. Okay. 36 RBI. So. And how many walks? What you wanted. How many walks? Uh, 33. That's fine. <laughs> He's sitting 423, Keith. No, I think it's a little more than fine. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a mere bag of shell. <laughs> I mean, he, he's been awesome, but of course, you know, nobody's noticing because his team is 22 games under 500. Mets are actively rooting for the Reds tonight because they're playing the Cardinals. Start of the series in Cincinnati. Cardinals are up 1 0 in the fourth on a Yadier Molina home run. Harper lines one the other way for a base hit, and that's going to go up the gap and all the way to the wall. Harper pulls in with his 21st double of the year. It comes with one out of the fourth. Well, there's the pitch up and away that I would like to have him pitch. He gets on top of this one. And I've seen a few balls get by Cespedes in the outfield, and I know it's because of the quad when he has to go laterally. A couple balls got by him in the gap, this homestand, and one down the line. And he's not moving 100%. I got a name for you for the top five in the National League. Corey Seager. Mm. Well, he certainly is the front runner for the rookie of the year. You put him in that MVP oh. conversation, too? Maybe. No. I mean, just because the Dodgers have played so well. He'll get the rookie of the year. No, I was saying, like, top five, though. He's going to be the oh, guy. You don't kind of voting? Yeah. Harper. 
for its second 18 stolen bases this year. Can't let him uh, think about trying to steal third here. He's got a very small lead. Kelly Johnson giving a lot of attention to Harper. Well, it was interesting before when Trey Turner stole. Uh, Estrubel Cabrera was trying to hold him on. He doesn't have great lateral movement. He's not going to be able to do that. Better to do that with Johnson. Easier, of course, with the right-handed hitter up. Harper wants to go. Turner stole third base in the first inning and got a huge jump. Syndergaard doing a better job there, paying some mind to Harper so he couldn't get that kind of lead. But when you take that big lead, you are you see Syndergaard's very much aware of it. You're getting Syndergaard out of his rhythm. And Syndergaard just got to learn to be able to pitch with runners on base when I, with a steal, not worry so much about the steal. Well, but which is it? Is he worrying too much or is he not worrying well, enough? What, well, there's little things you can do as a young pitcher. See how he looks back and forth? Mm -hmm. A lot of young pitchers do that to look back and forth, but they never pick up the catcher. What you have to do before you look that last time, pick up the target, look back one more time, and then go. Rendon, skies one to left center. And Sassman just takes charge of it. Harper stays put, two out. What I'm saying, like a lot of young pitchers, they'll have their head on a swivel, going back and forth, looking the runner back, and they never pick up the catcher. On your last swivel to look at the runner, right before that, you pick up the catcher. Oh, he's sitting outside down. Look at him, and boom, you go. So you don't have to look back at the plate. So now you've got the runner flat-footed, and you're pitching before he can get exactly. back. Exactly. It's so one of the little tricks you can do. No runner runs when the pitcher's looking at him. Ronnie, when you came up on 84, your first it was your first full season, correct? First full season, yeah. You had the Cubs stole bases. Everybody stole bases. You had to learn on the fly immediately. Or you, you had the Cardinals. It, it was uh, survival. I got a question for you, and I don't I don't mean this to be disparaging of anybody. Yeah. What you just said, do you think that's being taught? No, absolutely not. If there's not, a, there's a, there's if a, not, why not? Well, I think there's there's a I think there's a um, I think the difficult part, and I think this is very difficult. The difficult part is that we know how important it is to keep these arms healthy, and I think that everyone is afraid of working so much on the running game that at some point you might get a young pitcher out of sync, and it's going to affect his arm in some way. So I think it's something that might be done in spring training or maybe they'll address it. But during the season he's gotten better but he's not even close to the midpoint line of being a guy that's a little difficult to steal against. Struck out Ramos his first time up Harper faked as though he was going to go and then stopped. One and one to Ramos. Takes off this time, uh, and no throw by Rivera as Harper goes in standing up. And I've never seen. I know it's two outs, and Harper would have been better served to steal with one out. That fly ball to Cespedes would have scored him, uh, and no one's watching him, and they're almost conceding and saying, "Okay, we're just going to play defense here. If you want to steal third, third, fine." But to me, anything can happen with the ball in play. It could be an error. Yeah, but he's going to score. It also brings the wild pitch into play, Keith. And I have never seen a third baseman I like the Mets this year not cover third base. Toward the middle of the diamond, and Wilson drives. Wilson Ramos drives in the run as Ramos comes in to score, and it's two nothing Washington. Have you seen that, Ronnie? No. The, the Mets have been uh, done it quite a bit. The third baseman doesn't even cover third. So I guess the computer that's feeding all this data is, is fritzing out and not giving them proper uh, too much plate right there Ron down and uh, outer half good two strike hitting from Ramos going right back up the middle. So two nothing Washington. Uh, Clint Robinson takes the change up for a strike. Ramos 
Cardinals his 72nd run bat at end of the year. Four stolen bases now against Syndergaard tonight 45 for the season. And driving that pitch count up. Right at Johnson. And that ends the inning. But the Nats had a run on Ramos's two out RBI hit. Two nothing in the fourth. Follow SNY on Twitter during the fifth inning of tonight's game for details on how to enter the SNY fifth inning sweepstakes presented by Tri State Ford. Noah Syndergaard looking a little shell shocked after four stolen bases in the first four innings. This is uh, how Washington, they really have a game plan against Syndergaard. They, they've executed the last two starts against him. Five stolen bases in a game against him. In July, and now four stolen bases already tonight. It's a very uh, simplistic strategy. Get on steal. As Dribble Cabrera has been the Mets' only base runner tonight, a one out single in the first against A.J. Cole. Cabrera, Cespedes, and Bruce for the Mets in the fourth. You know what's interesting is you guys mentioned it first. Uh, Dusty Baker really tipped his hand in spring training that this is how he's going to play against the Mets. First inning of the first spring training game up in Vieira. They were off and running. And you know that had something to do with trying to bore a hole in a you know a weakness yeah. for the Mets. But I think also from Dusty's standpoint it was trying to take a team that had vastly underperformed the year before under a different manager and saying this is going to be a different year. And, and also shell shocked by the Mets the last two months. Dusty always with that toothpick in his mouth. <laughs> Cabrera pulls one down the line hooking. Foul. Oh. Plenty of distance. Not straight enough. Double one up in. This one in the air to deep right center. That goes Turner near the wall, leaping. He can't get it. Home run. 
last dribble, Cabrera does it again. Number 19 for Cabrera to cut the Nats late in half. It's two to one. Just a tremendous season for Ezrubel. He should just keep dying that hair. Don't change it. Six home runs in his last eight games. He has never had a span like this in his career. And he's doing it basically on one leg. Times you see a guy hit one foul for a home run and then hit one fair on the next pitch. Very rare. He wanted to come inside again. We're talking about AJ Cole, and that ball bled out over the middle. I can remember the only time that I saw it, or remember seeing it, was Rusty Staub was in the building tonight. Did it against Jeff Reardon. By the way, how about the athleticism of Turner? How Got close, out right? Ball. Espinus lifts one to right. Harper's got plenty of room. One out. We mentioned he wanted the ball in. Look with it right down Broadway and up. When you're a pitcher who runs the fastball, almost impossible for you to be consistent inside the left handed hitters. Can't do it. It's the power of platinum. Mets home run means $2,000 for no kid hungry enough to provide 20,000 healthy meals courtesy of City. Remember um, a number of years ago when the Mets in a, a team bonding exercise all shaved their heads. You may be getting to the point as hot as Cabrera is that it's time for everybody else to go blonde. Just saying. If it'll help I'll do it. <laughs> That would be an I, ugly I, sight. I can't help. <laughs> <laughs> Over the glove of Cole in a no man's land, and Bruce has an infield hit. Cole got just enough of that to slow it down and make sure nobody could make a play. And Bruce is aboard. Well, when you're a strikeout pitcher, um, you've got to do a little better job of fielding your position. This is a pretty easy play. Comes right back at him, but he kind of lost it as it was over his head. Guys, is it me or does it seem maybe it's just a time of year? We've watched from our vantage point. Center fielders run to right center. Looks like they're going to catch the ball like they do the first seven years of this ballpark, and the ball's got out of the, going out. Yeah. It's going out. Well, Ronnie, I, I said this a couple of months ago. I, there's something with the baseball this year. It's all over, all over the game. Home runs are up everywhere. It was Flores who popped up his first time up. You see it all the time. The ball going further than the outfielders expect. Not saying it's a conspiracy, but it just seems like the ball is a little uh, run a little tighter. So it stays in the air a little longer, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the home run numbers this year. You know, way up from from last year and the last few years. We just know in this ballpark, we've watched the outfielders go after baseballs for so many seasons. And if they are tracking them, they usually stay in the park. Not the case the last couple of weeks or so, last three weeks. Mm. Just for reference, last year there were 2.02 home runs per game. This year it's 2.33, so it's a third of a home run wow. more per every game in the majors this year. That's pretty significant. It's huge. One and two to Flores with Granderson on deck. Bruce the tying run at first with one out. And Wilmer tries to stop the swing and he held it in time. Two and two. Second time around the batting order. Against A.J. Cole facing the Mets for his first time. Just one base runner first time through. Wilmer pokes one down the right side. That'll go foul. 
City probables for the remainder of the series. Robert Gazelman gets his second start tomorrow night against Tanner Roark, who's had a great season. Sunday night, it's Seth Lugo against Max Scherzer, who's had a great season. Tanner Roark won what 15 ball games two years ago. They put him in the bullpen last year, and he wasn't happy, I'm sure. Had a so-so year. Back in the rotation this year, he's going to win 15, more than 15 this season. Stays healthy. How about Scherzer? Two years with the Nats. Nine times now, he's had a no-hitter for five innings. Including two he finished last year. 15 percent of the time, he takes the mound, takes a no-hitter to the sixth. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. Was he no-hit the Mets here on the final week of the season last year? After it was decided. And Zellman continues to try to have that no name defense pitching staff to keep it going. Well, with DeGrom now uh, certainly going to miss at least a start, that probably means Rafael Montero gets another shot. So you're talking about Lugo, Zellman, Montero filling three spots in the rotation with Syndergaard and Cologne. I don't know what is going to happen with Jake beyond missing one start, but obviously. With every game of utmost importance, that is distressing news. Bruce runs 3 2 is outside and low ball four, and the Mets have two men on. All breaking ball. You know, Flores had it back very much like that last night in the eighth inning against Kyle Barraclaw. He's been really seeing the ball well and very selective in these at bats and that's why Terry Collins opted to send Bruce have him running on the three two count. It's like did you forget your fastball. Well this is where you run out of tricks when you only have two pitches and you're going through the lineup for the second time. You know you don't have anything real soft to show the hitter kind of that hard sinking fastball hard slider. This uh, this is the Nats game first game in September and their first game with expanded rosters. They called up five pitchers today so they've got plenty of bullpen help behind Cole. 13 total right 13 of the bullpen including Matt Latos right. mm. and Sean Burnett who had some uh, had a great year here a couple seasons ago. Mm -hmm. So here's Granderson with two men on. Curtis fly to center his first time up. Bruce at second. Flores at first with one out. A run home here in the fourth. Mm. A high breaking run for a strike. That's his curveball. First time we've seen that. Well, the numbers almost look like a misprint for Curtis with runners in scoring position. And he pops this one up. Rendon alone on the left side of the infield retreats. And that's the second out. So it just gets uglier for Curtis trying to drive in runs. 22 home runs, 38 runs batted in. That would be unprecedented in the history of baseball if it finished that way. Well, we always talk about doing something that no one's ever done, but. <laughs> That's not where you want to go. Not what you're looking for. Yeah. So it's left to Kelly Johnson with two out and two on. Kelly fly to left his first time up, and they stack three infielders on the right side again. And the slider low and in. Ball one. Good eye by Kelly there. That's a pitch that he normally chases. And there's your difference. Instead of 0 and 1, you're 1 and 0. Change up and it's two and out. Oh. Some cold Blake got a couple more weapons here, second yeah. time through the order. Had to be reminded though by his pitching coach. Yeah, he's behind on Johnson. Bruce at second, Flores at first with two out. And Kelly takes it wide. Now it's three and out. Oh. St. Louis just got a Randall Gritchick home run. They lead Cincinnati 2 0 in the fifth. That's two games behind the Cardinals coming into play tonight. Kelly swinging 3 0 and fouls it back. 
Now that'll come out of play. Well, with Rivera on deck, Barry Collins gave him a green light. Well, the Giants lost to the Cubs for the second straight game, so their lead for the first wild card is only one game. Could be a half by the end of the night if the Cardinals win. And then come the Mets, the Pirates, and Miami. The Pirates are uh, home against Milwaukee, no score in the fifth. The, uh, the Marlins are in Cleveland. They're down 4 0 in the fourth to Carlos Carrasco and the Indians. 3 and 1 now to Johnson. And Kelly swings and fouls it back. You know, Keith, you and I never played when there was a wild card. If you're a wild card team, are you chasing the Cardinals or are you chasing the Giants? One at a time, right? Is that to, what you do? You got to get in first. Got to get in and get get to get to the second guy, whoever it is at that time, because they're all bunched, and then worry about the guy that's in front for the home home field advantage, right, Ron? Yeah. Giants are in trouble because they not only have this four-game series with the Cubs, they still have what six more games of the Dodgers. Yeah. They could they could plummet. Runners get set to go, and Johnson strikes out to end the inning. So Cole came back from 3 and 0 to get Kelly Johnson. The Mets settle for one run in the fourth. Who else says Dribble Cabrera as hot as he could be? Six home runs in his last eight games, 19 for the year. And it cuts the Nats lead to 2 to 1 going to the fifth. To test drive a new Ford, you'll discover why Ford is the total package. Let's go to the City Pavilion and to Steve Gelb's report tonight. It's brought to you by City. Steve? Gary, for the most part, Jose Reyes's transition to third base has been pretty smooth, although there are a couple of things he says he's still a little bit uncomfortable with trying to work on. The first are the in between hops. He says, as a third baseman, uh, it's very different than shortstop, where shortstop, you're always charging the ball. At third base, you need to figure out pretty quickly if you want to charge or stay back. The second thing are the bare hand plays, which Actually, if you watch when he tries to barehand the baseball, Tim Tuffle was saying Reyes tends to overrun the baseball. And that is, again, going back to the shortstop instincts, where once the ball is hit off the bat, you immediately charge forward. Tuffle would like to see him slow down and really look that baseball into his hand. Well, he's learning a new position, uh, Steve, and I think he's been playing third base quite admirably. You know, when. Reyes first started playing third base. We noticed that in his setup position, he was pretty erect, which is the way he used to do it at shortstop. It looks like he's gotten a little lower, although not as low as a lot of corner infielders. You have to be a little more ready. You're in closer. No matter, he plays a deep third base, Jose. We've noted that. He's playing a deep third base right now. And Reyes retreating on the pop up by Espinosa. Cabrera comes over and calls him off. 
One out. Now the pitcher A.J. Cole who struck out his first time up. Even though Jose plays a deeper third base uh, consistently he still that ball is getting to him quicker than it is at shortstop. And you have to be more in a set position here with your glove down. Because Jose like to stand up at second at shortstop right. a lot. See, I wouldn't I would want my glove down on the ground facing the facing the hitter. He's retired now but Scott Rowland was one of the best I ever saw and he was down like a goalie in a crouch. What's fascinating to me about the left side of the Mets infield right now is that the shortstop Cabrera gets lower than the third baseman <laughs> Reyes and you never see that. The other thing is is that he's played shortstop for so many years in a certain way. So maybe you're trying to limit all those things you're trying to teach him and just you know do what you've done. Let the natural athletic ability kind of take over. This is Cabrera. Watch how low he gets. He gets down. <laughs> and he charges in. Pitcher running, plenty of time, two out. Good timing there. So two on that Trey Turner coming up and if we're tracking Reyes's ready position you have to figure he has to play closer against Turner with all his speed. Well he's got to take away the bunt well, because Turner can turn it into a, a man in scoring position. Well Jose likes to play 20 to 25 feet behind the cut of the grass. Uh, now he's only 10 feet off the cut of the grass. Next swing and run around. It's a couple on Turner now. Eric Cooper at first base has punched him both times. Turner's been behind in the count both at bats. On 0 and 2, he dumped a single into right field leading off the game, stole second, stole third, and scored a run. He pops this one up, and Kelly Johnson has it lined up. 1 2 3 inning for Noah Syndergaard in the top of the fifth. Halfway through at City Field, Washington 2, Mets 1. Got a run in the first, a run in the fourth, helped out by four stolen bases. As Dribble Cabrera with a home run for the Mets run. And it's two to one Washington going to the bottom of the fifth. 
Monday on Mets Insider. New York has always been known for its passionate fan base. Here for some first year Mets players about how they deal with the pressure and high expectations that come with wearing a Mets uniform on Mets Insider. Presented by W.B. Mason Monday at 4.30 only on SNY. A.J. Cole bent but didn't break in the fourth inning. Now he gets 8, 9, and 1 in the Mets batting order in the fifth. Rivera, Syndergaard, and Reyes. And Rene takes a slider for a strike. Rivera struck out his first time up. Popped up. Robinson and Murphy both out, and Murphy calls for it. One out. Well, the Nationals in first, the Mets are in second, and the Nats lead the season series nine games to four. And in fact, you look up and down the line, all the division leaders have a season series advantage against all the second place teams. None more so than the Indians against the Tigers. The Indians, four and a half games in front of the Tigers. Mm. Look at the Rangers. 11 and 1. Look at the Rangers and the Astros, though. Jeez. Now, Texas is 8.5 in front of Houston. So even if they were playing 500, they would still be, they'd still be in the lead. But the, uh, the AL Central one is stark. There's, uh, they're going head to head tonight, and Houston's up early. Dallas Keuchel starting for Houston. A.J. Cole, third start of the year, looking for his first win. Syndergaard gets a little ahead of that one. He has home run on the brain. Three home runs this year. Nice. And Cole strikes him out with a slider. A little down Four tilt. strikeouts for Cole. A little bit of down tilt on that one. That was maybe his best slider on night to the pitcher. Let me tell you something. This is, to me, is proof that you don't have to throw the ball through a doggone brick wall to win ball games. You locate and have good movement. You're going to win. It's always been thus, right? Reyes is over two, struck out and grounded to second. And thinks about a bunt as Cole throws the curveball outside. That drew Rendon charging in from third. Hmm. And change up off the plate, 2 0. Each team has three hits tonight. The difference is the stolen bases. Four of them for the Nationals, helping them to the two runs. Middle of 2013, the Nats are 24 and 8 at City Field. They have just dominated the Mets in their own ballpark. And mostly they've done it with pitching. Of those 32 games, they've held the Mets to two runs or fewer in 24 of the 32. Think about that. Wow. Huh. So three quarters or a uh, Of the games, just about. The Mets have scored two runs or less against the Nats here at City Field since the middle of 2013. And here we are again, and this time with a fill in starter. With the Mets poised to face Roark and Scherzer the next two nights. Reyes pops one up. Robinson should have a play. And that retires the side, so A.J. Cole keeps on rolling. A 1-2-3 bottom of the fifth. Stays 2-1 Washington.
leaderboard. Noah Syndergaard started the night third in the National League in ERA. Lester's actually better than that now after his performance this afternoon. He's at 2.61. Mm. So Kyle Hendricks still the unlikely leader. Jason Worth leading off the sixth inning. Worth is lined to short and fly deep to center. 0 for 2 against Syndergaard, who's given up three hits over the first five innings. We've talked a lot about Noah and his problems with the running game, and a lot of times the name Doc Gooden gets invoked because Doc famously gave up 60 stolen bases in a season. Of course, he was striking out the world in those days, and it didn't seem to matter a whole lot. But the 45 stolen bases that Syndergaard has given up this year is the most by any major league pitcher in 15 years. Wow. The last to give up 45 steals in a season was Hideo Nomo with the Red Sox in 2001. Unusual uh, way to go to the mound. I mean, uh, way to go to the plate. Took him forever. And that tornado delivery. Funny thing about Nomo, I don't know if you remember this. He threw the first no hitter at Coors Field and he did it pitching the entire game out of the stretch. That's right. I remember that. Because they had had a lot of rain and the, the mound was muddy. Right at Johnson. And Worth is retired. One out. Well, Syndergaard has been in the big leagues for a year and a half. That's picked him up in the trade with the Blue Jays after Toronto took him in the supplemental part of the first round of the 2010 draft out of mm. high school in Mansfield, Texas. Just turned 24 years of age on Monday. Here's Murph. Robbed of a hit on a nice play by Flores behind the bag his last time up. Walked his first trip to the plate. And a fastball strike. Change up. I think it was first pitch change up. It was very unusual from Noah. And he got changed the game plan against Murph. He's the gonna, way he's been wearing the Mets out. He's going to air one inside here. Ooh. Just miss with it. One and one. Always been a good combination. Change up and then something fresh inside. Check our Twitter poll results brought to you by Toyota, who will win the National League MVP. Chris Bryant with a small edge over Daniel Murphy mm -hmm. in our poll. Probably how it's going to be unless uh, Arenado goes. Well, he's gone crazy, maybe crazier. Well, Rizzo has a huge September. Yeah. One, two from Syndergaard. And he struck him out. Got him with a slider. Third strike out of the night for Noah. Let's check in with the studio. Mark Malusis as a game break brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Reds just got a run in the bottom of the sixth to make it two to one, and they have the tying run at second with one out. Meanwhile, the Brewers have gone in front of the Pirates 1 0 in the sixth on a Scooter Jeanette RBI double. Pittsburgh directly behind the Mets in the standings. Here's Harper, sacrifice fly. Then he doubled, stole base, and scored a run, so he's been right in the middle of everything for the Nats tonight. This is the slider grip. He's on the side of that seam. And what made that pitch so effective, not only the execution of it, but he had made Murphy aware of two fastballs inside and then threw a pitch hard and down and in. Good sequence of pitches by Noah and Rivera. Change up and he falls behind Harper 2 0. Reds just tied up the Cardinals 2 2 in the sixth against Anthony Reyes. 
Alex Reyes. They had an Anthony Reyes. They did. They did. Alex Reyes, who's from uh, just across the river in New Jersey. Oh dear, your Yankees are losing eight nothing in the fifth. Who's <laughs> Yankees? <laughs> Is he swinging here, three and zero. Oh? Why not? Keep it away. And he rips one to right, but Bruce is there. Side retired. A bullet off the bat of Harper. Well, Syndergaard has himself a 1 2 3 inning. He's set down seven in a row. So the bottom of the sixth, Mets down two to one. Vodka as Dribble Cabrera's home run, the only run for the Mets tonight. He has two of the Mets' three hits, and he leads off in the bottom of the sixth against A.J. Cole. Cabrera's home run was his 19th of the year. The record for home runs by a Mets shortstop in a season is 19. Hmm. Jose Reyes has that record. However, Cabrera only has 18 as a shortstop because he hit one last night as a pinch hitter. So he doesn't. Have a share of the record yet, but he's getting there. It's the second highest home run total of his career. He had 25 in a season early in his career with the Indians. Slider, but he held the swing. Two and two. Cespedes on deck, Bruce behind him. Nationals bullpen is about to get active behind A.J. Cole, who's at 85 pitches for the night. Oh, Herrera lays off the changeup, and it's three and two. That was a good pitch. And squeeze right there. Home run off the fastball, 3 2 slider, almost automatic here. And he lays off the ball four, so Cabrera is on base for the third straight time. Second walk given up by Cole. And the Mets have the tying run aboard with nobody out. Now Cespedes has been up twice, flied out twice. False alarm, nobody up yet in the Nationals bullpen. Both for 112 pitches in his last start against the Rockies. It's 
And that's because 27 home runs for the year. Bruce on deck, 28 home runs for the year. Cabrera at first and nobody out. And a slider hit in the air to left. Worth is right there. One out. And Ronnie, we mentioned how the breaking ball to the right handers from this Cole gets the hitters out in front. Slider flat, but look at him, re uh, says this reach for it. Out in front. So there's something deceptive either in the delivery or in the pitch itself, Ronnie, that's getting these right hand hitters out in front. So you're saying the slider is, has a little bit of change of pace to it? Uh, yes. Okay. So now Bruce, who had an infield hit off the pitcher's glove, is for his uh, last time up. One for two tonight. If AJ Cole could get a little more aggressive with his fastball, throw that for strikes, he'd really have something working. Yeah, two and oh. Denigrate what he's done. He's only given up one run here in the sixth inning, but as he evolves, that'll that'll be a pitch he should be more aggressive with. He seems very composed on the mound. He's 24 years old. Behind on Bruce, two and zero, and on the line strike, two and one. Flores on deck. Wants him to roll it over. Maybe stick with that running fastball away. Mm. That was down the middle. Right into his house, and he swung right through it. Bruce homeward last night, his 28th of the year, his third as a Met. Three infielders stacked on the right side against him. 2 2 from Cole. Mm. Up and away, full count. Second mm. full count of the inning for Cole. Not happy with himself there, Ronnie. He wanted a strike. Got a left hander up in the Nats bullpen now. That is Mark Zepchinski, recently acquired from Oakland. And I do think that if the bad knee of Cabrera, you can't send him. Not going, and Bruce strikes out for the second out. Five strikeouts for A.J. Cole. He challenged him twice in that bat behind in the count, Keith. And had plenty of plate and strays the string. Choked up on the bat with two strikes. Still swinging under it. Yes, Gary. So two out Cabrera who drew a lead off walk is still at first and now Flores has popped up and walked. So you got the lefty Zepchinski up in the bullpen with Granderson and Johnson two left hand hitters to follow. So if Flores gets on that might be all for Cole. It's got to be with a 13 man bullpen. <laughs> I mean come on. Mike Maddox checking to see if Zepchinski is ready. And slider for a strike one and one. Boy, that little spinning slider you think would be right in the wheelhouse for Flores. He likes that pitch, Keith. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, Ronnie. I couldn't agree with you more. He's kept them off balance. You give him credit. Popped up. Murphy calling for it. Side retired. Cole works around the leadoff walk, keeps the Nats in front two to one after six.
Wise brought to you by the State Farm agent of the game, Pat Cauley of Glendale, New York. Contact Pat at patcauley.com. When has Pat ever been alone in his photo? <laughs> First time. By Sleepy's. Sleepy's holiday door busters are happening now through Monday. Sleepy's, the only mattress professionals. And by Sherwin Williams. Stop by your local Sherwin Williams store for all of your painting needs. Syndergaard tries to paint, but misses inside. Ball one to Anthony Rendon. Rendon has been up twice and flied out to left field both times. Syndergaard has retired seven in a row. But if the Mets do not rally and win this game, the stolen bases will be the big story of the night for Syndergaard. Trey Turner stole second and third in the first inning. That led to the first run. Bryce Harper stole third in the fourth inning. That led to the second run. Mm. Noah has struck out only three tonight. Walk one. Allowed just three hits. And he pops one inside to Rendon. Three and one. Wilson Ramos on deck, then Clint Robinson. That's trying to get Syndergaard through the seventh. Nobody up in the Mets bullpen as yet. Don't takes a big rip and fouls it back three and two. No over his last three starts coming into this one. Three and oh, one point three one. He never better. And in that start in San Francisco when he matched up against Jeff Samarja in the Sunday night game. Rendon pops one in the shallow right. Johnson out. And makes the reaching grab one away. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Does it look more like Syndergaard is in a rhythm and is throwing more to contact? Do you feel uh, that way? Well, I, I was saying it before the game. I think the keys for him and the last three starts that he's made, Gary was mentioning the last two starts he's made, is that he's been pitching more to contact. I think he's been trying to put hitters away when he gets two strikes on him, which is the key. And the one thing he has been able to do here is to put a lock on the running game. That's why he's behind. He's got a good slider going here late. He's got his rhythm with the slider. Well, the, the rhythm. When he's not in the stretch with runners on, it's a lot different than it is when no one's on. One of the difficulties he had before this recent stretch was that he was giving up enormous numbers of foul balls, mm. and that was prolonging at bats. Has he done anything differently, do you think, to, to cut down on the foul balls? See, what happens for a young pitcher, and it happened to me, is that you are preached to throw strikes throw strikes get ahead throw strikes you forget about when you get ahead of hitters the goal is throw a ball that appears to be a strike but it's not a strike so you can get strike happy and that's how you end up with a lot of foul balls or 0 2 hits or things like that Gary I think that that stretch that he had where they were giving his a lot of long at bats was that he was he lost command of his breaking ball. Remember, he was spiking it a lot and therefore not getting into one two counts where that spike breaking ball works more, it's more effective, and getting in three two counts, two two counts of men on base, and he had to throw the fastball. Syndergaard off the mound, plenty of time with Ramos running, and that's the second out. But he's found the range. It was only around four or four games that he lost that spiking that, that breaking ball. And he righted the ship on the road trip, uh, uh, the, in the Arizona San Francisco road trip. And uh, ever since, he's been getting better and better. Terrific game against the Phillies last Saturday. Gave up just a Freddie Galvey's home run in seven innings. And he's certainly been good enough really? tonight, other than the stolen bases. Just that the Mets haven't done much against A.J. Cole. Here's Clint Robinson, who's 0 for 2, two ground ball outs. Change up outside. The hitter you got to be aware of. He can lose a. He can have you rubbing up a new one real quick. He's got it's got some pop. Syndergaard knows that he's given up two home runs to Robinson and only eight at bats. Ball strike. Fernando Salas up in the Mets bullpen made his Mets debut last night. There's the numbers on Syndergaard. The 2.55 ERA coming into the night, third in the league. 
34 walks for a 23 slash 24 year old. Amazing. Well, he's top six in the league in both most strikeouts per nine innings and fewest walks per nine innings, which is phenomenal. Yes. The nearly six to one strikeout to walk ratio coming into the night. Misses with the change up and now it's three and one. In the National League this year, if you take Kershaw out of the equation because he doesn't have enough innings to qualify, Syndergaard right on top in strikeout to walk ratio. What's Kershaw like? Ten to one? Thirteen, I think. Oh. He didn't, was twenty at one point this season. Didn't Kershaw have a successful uh, rehab assignment, Gary? Tomorrow, I believe it is. Or is it he threw a simulated yeah. game. Yes. And uh, they're saying that he might pitch in a game next week. Could be a minor league game, but it also could be a major league game. And Syndergaard got uh, the benefit of that high strike call to get the count to three and two. He's retired nine in a row. And now ten as he strikes out Rob, uh, Robinson to end the inning. Fourth strikeout for Noah. Probably the end of his night. Seven good innings. We'll see if they're good enough. Stretch time at City Field, Nationals two, Mets one. Guard, but the four stolen bases have him behind in the game two to one. We'll see if the Mets can rally against the Nationals bullpen. Mark Zepchinski will pitch the seventh. Well, traded over to the Nationals from the Oakland Athletics. Dan Worthen congratulates Syndergaard along with Mats and Zellman. Zepchinski uh, has always owned left handed hitters. 56 games, 60 now. There's four with the Washington Nationals. That's not given up a run yet. Quite the name. Now with his six different major league teams started out with Toronto and he gets a strike to Granderson now last week or maybe it was the week before when Zepchinski got traded we mentioned that his nickname is Scrapple and I opined that maybe the nickname was a little bit off because Zepchinski has two Z's in his name and in a standard Scrabble game That's there's right. only one Z. Well, the nice folks at Scrabble were kind enough to send along the Super Scrabble, which actually has two Z's. So perhaps Zebchinski is only slightly misnamed. Rather than Scrabble, he should be Super Scrabble. Well, Gary, to add to your fun, there's more spaces, more tiles, and more points <laughs> in the well, Super Scrabble game. So you might be able to spell Zebchinski. <laughs> <laughs> the 
breaking ball by Zepchinski to strike out Granderson for the first down. That was Russ Ralton, by the way, folks, our stage manager. If you're interested, you would have fit right in on Let's Make a Deal. Oh, it's outstanding. I would trust him with the cash anytime. I mean, Zepchinski's career best moment is in 2011 when the Cardinals won the World Series, and he was part of that bullpen. The starting pitchers for the Cardinals could not get through five innings. And he and Lance Lynn and others were a big part of that bullpen that beat the Texas Rangers. Pitching in relief of A.J. Cole, who was terrific. Six innings, one run, three hits. Walk two, struck out five. And has a chance for his first win. Coda Glover is up in the bullpen for Washington. Johnson just barely makes contact to stay in there. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. We asked two of the four players traded for Gary Carter in I, December of 84. What do you got? I've got Herm, Fitzy, Yeomans, and Hubie. That's it. Of course, Fitzgerald was the catcher, Winningham the outfielder. Herm Brooks is, was the linchpin of the trade. Floyd Yeomans was a young pitcher with a great promise. He threw bullets. He threw bullets. And Herm Winningham had the corn cob uh, pipe, remember? That's just open pipe. I don't remember Max, that. Uh, I do. Corn cob pipe? Yes, he smoked a corn cob pipe. He looked like an old uh, farmer back in the 19th century. <laughs> I don't remember that. I do. You remember some he, was, stuff. He, he was a pipe smoker. You know, the thing about Herm Winningham, I'll never forget, he, he was great speed. But he came up, he was brought up from double A to the triple A team where I was at, Tidewater. We were playing in Toledo. He made his debut. They went five for five mm. in that game. We're, we were like, where's this guy been? Johnson battling against Zepchinski, so tough on lefties. And he strikes him out. Mm. Back to back strikeouts for Zepchinski to start the seventh. It's a, a real strong pickup for the Nationals late. Good, hard hook. Well, they've been going most of the year with Felipe Rivero as their primary lefty. Also Oliver Perez. But Ali in particular faltered and they felt they needed left handed relief help. Now they not only have Zepchinski, they also have Sean Burnett back, right. who did such a nice job for them a few years ago. There's Rene Rivera. Burnett was just added today when the rosters expanded. Ty Kelly is out on deck. He'll pinch hit. If Rivera can keep the inning going, with Syndergaard spot due up next, and Zepchinski facing a right-hand hitter for the first time falls behind two and up. There's Kelly, the switch hitter. So strong against the lefties, righty comes in and you lose the strike zone. And a strike. We're just looking at Zepchinski's splits this year. He's backwards. Thought you'd been better against righties. Really? Yeah. 232 right handers, 278 left handers. It's a little shocking. Now Travis Darno's replaced Kelly in the on deck circle. Let's have a third catcher now with Ploiecki up. So that frees mm -hmm. Darno to pinch hit, and Rivera's on with a two out walk. Noah Syndergaard makes his case for banning the wave, plus other rules of the ballpark. On an all new episode of the SNY.TV digital series, The Amazing Life, presented by Coca Cola. Check it out now at SNY.TV slash Coca Cola. So Syndergaard is done after seven strong innings. And so the tying run at first with two out as Darno bats for Noah. Keith, question for you. Uh, Syndergaard's going to be out of the game. 
Would you run for Rivera here with two outs Good. since you have such a, a, a larger bench? Who would you run? We can run with Diaz. That's absolutely. Good call. You can, you can run with DeGrom. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with his legs. Just would hate the, for Darno to hit a line drive double and not get a run out of it. It's one of the things that you do in September that you don't do earlier in the year because you have the extra numbers. That's with a six man bench tonight. And you can bat Darno because you have Plowecki there as the third catcher. That's up Chinsky quickly ahead on Travis 0 and 2. Darno 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter this year. Four seasons of baseball spring training, regular season, September, and postseason. It's really true. <laughs> it's a different game in September. Change up missing, one and two. Well, they had the right hander Glover up briefly, but he has sat down. Dusty Baker opting to leave Zevchinsky in the face, the right hand pinch hitter. Was the Mets might have gone to Conforto had they brought in the righty. And oh. Arno is hit by the pitch. And that'll move the tying run to second base. So Zepchinski just yanked it a little hard on the slider. And the Mets have two men aboard with Reyes coming up. I would not believe the left hander in after these two first two at bats against these right hand hitters with Reyes, who's a Hitting much better from the right side. Well, they had sat the righty down, and now they get him back up. And Dusty Baker is going to make the change. So Glover had stopped throwing, but now he's begun again. And looks like he's coming into the game to face Reyes. Mets making a bid in the bottom of the seventh with two out and two on. As Dusty Baker makes a double switch, the call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon. Ryan Zimmerman comes into play first base. He'll bat ninth, and the rookie right-hander Kota Glover comes into pitch. Well, this is one of those hard-throwing relief pitchers from the minor leagues. He's moved up four different levels, Kota Glover, to get here in the big leagues this year. Throws 97 plus. Drafted just last year in the eighth round out of Oklahoma State. Now Ty Kelly comes in to run. For Rene Rivera carrying the tying run at second, Travis Darno, who will probably stay in to catch. 
pinch hit and he's on first. And now Jose Reyes with a chance to get the Mets at least even in this game. Jose is 0 for 3 tonight, struck out, grounded out, fouled out. Two out, two on, bottom of the seventh. Mets down 2 to 1. And the first pitch slider in from Glover for a strike. Kelly carrying the tying run at second. Darno at first. And Reyes fouls one into the dirt. 0 and 2. 97 plus and two sliders to start. Both at 90, <laughs> 91. So Glover with a serious arm. Twenty-three years old, just his tenth big league appearance. Quickly ahead on Reyes, 0 and 2. Mm. I say it lays off that one. Almost got lucky there, just backhanding that. You gotta mix in a high fastball, don't you, at some point out of the strike zone? The red hot as dribble Cabrera would be next. And the oh. backcourt breaking ball just missed. Two and two. Gary Cedars from with two strikes does a little Archie Bell on the uh, outside <laughs> corner. He does the tighten up or the straighten up. Mm. Might have gone around the plate. It, it did. Two out, two and on, two and two to Reyes. And so he hits one foul. Doesn't throw him a fastball yet. Get it. Well, they must feel that the young Glover has an unhittable kind of slider, but that one was manageable for Reyes. Quickly got ahead on Reyes 0 and 2, and now Jose has worked his way back. 2 2 coming. It's a fastball, fouled it off. Cabrera hoping for a turn on deck. The Nationals allowed just three runs in their three game sweep in Philadelphia before this series. They've allowed just one run tonight. On the Cabrera home run. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Reyes. And he strikes him out with a fastball. So Glover takes care of Reyes to end the inning. Fearless, get Ronnie. Whoa, what an arm! Right after him. So the rookie Glover comes in and strands two Mets. After seven at Civic Field, two to one Washington.
in the Mets and the Nationals. Nationals come in with the big lead. Mets trying to keep pace in the wild card race. And they had their big guy on the mound tonight. Noah Syndergaard, though, gave up a hassle of stolen bases that led to two Nationals runs. So good Nats defense kept the Mets off the board until as Dribble Cabrera took one deep again. His sixth in the last eight games to make it two to one. And that's where we stand going to the eighth. Let's make a battery switch. Travis Darno now catching. Fernando Salas, who made his Mets debut last night, will do the pitching. And Danny Espinosa leads off in the eighth inning. It was interesting to hear, as you see the numbers, was with the Angels and now over with the Mets. Uh, Terry Collins was saying he wanted him to come in and pitch last night because he wanted him to get a feel for the mound because of this big series against the Nationals. Strike to Espinosa, who's fly to right and popped to short. Syndergaard threw 109 pitches over seven innings, two runs, three hits, one walk, four strikeouts, and four stolen bases. 45 now for the year, and tonight really costly. Breaking ball misses high, two and one. There are tonight's starters brought to you by People's United Bank. AJ Cole, just his third start of the season, fourth of his career, and he acquitted himself quite nicely. And he is in line for the win if the Nats bullpen can make it stand up. Closer these days for Washington is Mark Melanson, who came over from the Pirates in a deadline deal. Which was an odd thing for the Pirates to do. Sure was. Being in the midst of a wild card race themselves. But they've had closing over there. Tony Watson? Yep. Well, Salas, when he was with St. Louis early in his career, I had a little more on the ball, and so does everyone. But uh, a little better control now. It's really whether his slider can be that wipeout pitch. And the fastball gets Espinosa looking for the first out. <laughs> Fernando Salas painting the corners. Stop by your local Sherwin Williams store for all of your painting needs. That's uh, right on the corners, Gare. Don't even need the blue tape. Oh. <laughs> now Ryan Zimmerman bats for the first time. It's been another injury riddled season for Zim, hitting just 217 for the year. Way off the plate. Salas gets ahead of him. 0 oh and 2. Kind of short arms it up there. It can be sneaky, Salas. So even though you're seeing 90 91 on the gun, he'll throw it by some people. Two months, first to a strained rib cage, then to a, a bruise on his wrist. So he's been in and out of the lineup. Salas missed with that pitch. Zimmerman had a good cut. They go into the bottom of the eighth in Cincinnati. Still the Cardinals two and the Reds two. That started the night two games behind St. Louis for the second wild card. Still lead the Pirates 1 0, going to the bottom of the eighth in Pittsburgh. Marlins are down in Cleveland 6 2 in the eighth inning. Milwaukee is the team that has always had the Pirates number. Go, go, feel, go figure it out. Two so men stop the swing, 1 and 2. Well, the Cardinals are happy, and it's hard to say uh, on the road. 40 and 25 record on the road.
Seventh pitch of the back coming from Salas to Zimmerman. And he got him looking at a fastball. Back to back strikeouts for Salas, both on call third strike fastball. Let's check in with the studio. Mark Malusa says another game break brought to you by the New York State Smokers Quit Line. Homered for the only Giants run in that game, but then he walked with two out in the ninth and was left stranded. Trey Turner takes outside ball one. Turner singled, stole second, stole third, scored on a sack fly in the first to set the tone for this game against Noah Syndergaard. He has been quite the spark plug at the top of the batting order for the Nats. And Salas paints the corner again, one and one. Salas has been moving the ball in and out. Side corner two and one. Jerry Blevins is getting ready in the Mets bullpen in case this inning gets to Murphy and Harper. Two and two now turn. Game two of this series tomorrow night. Robert Gazelman makes the start for the Mets. Tanner Roark for the Nats. Coverage begins at 6 o'clock tomorrow night right here on SNY. Coming up tonight after the postgame show, Geico Sports Night. Lots of football news and all the latest on the baseball as well. Geico Sports Night every night after the postgame. SNY. Exclusive. Full count to Turner. With Jason Worth on deck. Each team with only three hits tonight. Pull toward the hole, a base hit for Turner, his second hit of the game. So after 12 straight Nationals had been retired, Turner with a two out single and Syndergaard no longer on the mound, but Turner's got to be thinking about another stolen base. Nice level swing on that high pitch. Interesting grip there by Salas on the side of the baseball, trying to run it in. Worth tonight is 0 for 3. Line to short, fly deep to center, grounded to second, and Salas. We'll keep an eye on Turner, who's stolen two tonight, 20 for the season, which is the most for any Nationals rookie since they moved to Washington in 2005. As Blevins getting ready for Murphy, who's standing on deck. Interesting. Turner takes his lead. He's a little bit at like a 45 degree angle towards second. And he really leans hard on that right leg, that right foot, all that weight, so he can cross over and get going. Where the skies one to left field, a mile high, but not very deep. Cespedes comes on, and that retires the side. Another strong inning for Fernando Salas. That's come up in the bottom of the eighth. Really, they do. Two to one.
responsibility of Zdrubal Cabrera, who homered in the fourth inning. Another perfect night for him. A walk and a single to go with the home run. Two for two. Faces Kota Glover leading off the home eighth. Well, here's the home run. He wanted to come back inside, back to back. Up, to up and over the middle. That came one pitch after Cabrera hit one in the second deck in right field foul. Came right back and hit it over the fence in right center. Cespedes on deck, Bruce behind him. That's with the right hitters up in the bottom of the eighth. Nationals with the bullpen cranking, a lefty and a righty up behind Glover, who struck out Reyes to have the seventh. And he jams Cabrera, and it's one and two. I you know Dusty has this big lead. He has a chance to take a look at this youngster in a pressure situation. Two coming, and Cabrera fouls it back. Trying to take one to left field with the left side of the infield almost completely open. Oliver Perez, the left-hander, Sean Kelly, the right-hander. Look at the white shoes on Ollie. The goof, the goofy. <laughs> well. And Cabrera goes down swinging. Lover very impressive. He's faced two batters, fan them both. One down in the bottom of the eighth. He looks very poised and determined and unfazed in pitching in September in the major leagues for a first place team. Well, let's see how he contends with Cespedes. He's been up three times tonight and flied out all three. No matter how young you are as a pitcher, you know this name and you know this hitter. One run game in the eighth inning. Cespedes takes a slider for a strike. Never can throw bullets, but he's thrown predominantly sliders since coming in the game. And this is high ball to strike. Almost like he's got a Brad Lidge thing working. To Cespedes. Now one thing we know about you, Ennis, you make a mistake with a breaking ball, it gets lost in a hurry. Jay Bruce on deck. You now, the place to pitch Cespedes when you get ahead of him is up and in, but most pitchers cannot execute or are a little shy of going in. Checks swing foul on the fastball. First one he's seen. He did nicely right there. Ron was over the middle, but yeah. it was up out of the strike zone. Cespedes had a very defensive cut there. Let's see if he can double up with that fastball. No, nope, back to the slider. Glover, Glover has not yet given up a home run in the major leagues. You know, Gary, they. They've seen him for 10 games, so obviously they like his slider, and Ramos is calling it off. Now it's two and two to Cespedes, and he flares one to Murphy, mm. two out. So he saw just one fastball on that six pitch at bat. We'll do a pitch sequence on Cespedes. First pitch slider right down the pipe, taking all the way. High slider, one and one. Good slider down and away, one and two. High fastball on the strike zone, excellent, one and two. Slider away, two and two. And a backup slider inside corner that stayed in and jammed Yoannis. That's going to be all for Glover, who retired all three of his hitters and was very impressive. Now Oliver Perez will come in to face Jay Bruce with two out and nobody on. One run game in the eighth. And Ollie will bring his kangaroo shoes in from the bullpen. We'll be right back. <laughs>
It's a post game live CJ Papa and Jim Duquette in the studio. Oliver Perez in to face Jay Bruce. And Jay goes after the first pitch slider, nothing in one. Well, Ollie had a good start to his year, but you see that ERA Ooh. spiked. He has struggled of late. First batter face has been good, though, all season long. Nine outings in August, a 12.71 ERA. That's why they went out and got Zepchinski. But Bruce has never touched Ollie. He's 0 for 8 against him, and he's quickly down to the count 0 and 2. Ollie's got a lot of flair to him. He's got a lot of moving parts that you got to ignore and just pick up that baseball, I guess, huh, Keith? Yes. Can't follow all the. Never follow the motion. He always always been tough on the lefties. If anything, he's gotten quirkier yeah. since going to the bullpen. Now with his seventh different major league team. Great days and bad ones as a man. And Bruce pops one foul, almost goes back for a look, but that's out of play. So the Nationals' bullpen has been solid so far. Zepchinski came in to get a couple of strikeouts in the seventh. Lover retired all three of his batters with two strikeouts. Front foot closed. All you can see is the number 46 and Perez. Louis Tiant without the hands over the head. Louis used to get the wine over his head, the hands over his head. <laughs> what a nice man Louis Tiant is. Louis never turned his glove like that. I don't think anybody else did either. Ever. One two on the hesitation, and he strikes out Bruce to end the inning. So Molly gets Bruce again. And the Mets are down one, two, three in the bottom of the eighth. That's ten strikeouts for Nationals pitchers tonight. Second time Bruce has gone down on strikes, and we go to the ninth with the Nationals up two to one. Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. That was a nice play. Drive around the majors presented by Cadillac. Billy Hamilton just struck out with the bases loaded to end the eighth inning, so they're 2 2 going to the ninth in Cincinnati. Scooter Jeanette's RBI double, the only run of the game in Pittsburgh where they go to the ninth. And they're also in the ninth in Cleveland with the Marlins down 6 to 2. Carlos Carrasco, 11 strikeouts mm -hmm. tonight. Jerry Blevins in to face Daniel Murphy who takes a strike. Well Jerry's been getting better as the season goes on. Jeep numbers uh -huh. nine scoreless straight scoreless outings. And he's never had a blemish against Murph who's 0 for 9 against him. Bryce Harper on deck and then Anthony Rendon for the Nats in the top of the ninth. 
Murph is 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. And he slaps one toward the hole, a base hit. So his first marker ever against Jerry Blevins, an opposite field single. Hit that like the Murph of old. That's right. Well, and when you are fighting for a batting title, you want to stay away from the Ophers. Murph drew a walk in the first at bat. He's got a one for three working. He was smart hitting. Got a left hander that gives me trouble. Not going to try to drive the ball. He's going to wait for that pitch away and take it to the opposite. He let it get deep. Yeah. But you got to let it. Yes, he did. He let it deep. <laughs> and then he got to barrel it up. That's right, Jerry. Remember the one time he told me he took that third strike when it was in Houston when he was younger. I said, What'd you do there? Because well, I wanted to get it deep in the box. I said, Well, you sure did. You got it in the catcher's mitt. <laughs> Here's Harper. Has been involved in both runs for the Nats tonight. He had a sacrifice fly to drive in the first one. He doubled, stole a base, and scored the second one. Well, there is Mark Melanson. Now the Nationals closer. They let Jonathan Papelbon go. Nobody's picked Pap no. up, have they? When you wear your welcome out, it's bye bye. I wonder about that. I, I I thought somebody would take a flyer on him. Well, when you I think when you've lost your stuff, are you? I think when you're marginal. Yeah. If you're if you're the good soldier, you're going to get picked up. If you've been temperamental like him, if you, people are going to be be a little. They're going to say no. Yeah, he was 29 other teams temperamental. So Mike Rizzo, the Nats GM, who opted to stay with Papelbon after he put his hands around Harper's throat. In the last week of the season last year. But he found a better option in Melanson and Papelbon was sent packing. Now Levin's behind Harper 3 0. Harper swung 3 0 earlier in the game. Lined out. This time he takes a strike. Thought he had ball four. He was ready to take the shin guard off. They'll have to wait a pitch. 3 and 1 here. Robles up. Got starting right hand hitters up next. Starting to pitch better. Going to keep the ball away from you. This is a left center field gap right here. And a fastball strike. And again, Harper thought he had a walk. That's two premature loosenings of the shin guard. And now it's three and two. Murphy at first and nobody out. Will they send him? Short lead. Not going. Harper lines one the other way for a base hit. Murphy around second on his way to third. Harper digging for second. And the Nats have second and third and nobody out. So Harper goes the other way for his second double of the night. Well, you had a tough left hander out there and you had two left hand hitters. That went to the opposite field. That is good hitting. This ball had the middle of the plate, meant to get it away, it was up. And you become the table setter just because you're a three and four hitter and a two one ball game late. You are, you've got to consider yourself, I'm leading it off. I want to get the ball rolling here, keep the rally going. So Blevins unable to get the lefties out. Now Robles comes in to face the right hand hitters in search of some strikeouts. Nats looking for insurance in the top of the ninth, leading two to one. We'll be right back to City Field.
Not in the top of the ninth. Against Miami, he had probably his best outing in some time. Went two innings, only gave up a hit. So his Jeep numbers for the year. That's will bring the infield in, second and third, and nobody out. Anthony Rendon at the plate has gone 0 for 3 tonight. Murphy at third, Harper at second. As the Nats look to expand their 2 to 1 lead. Tough spot for Hansel. Picks off the inside corner with a slider. I'm not sure that was his intent. No, he was not. Nothing in one. Well, the game can be broken up right here. One base hit. Olson Ramos, the on deck batter, then the pitcher spot. And Rendon shoots one up the middle, a base hit, and that'll bring in two. Murphy and Harper will both score. Rendon gets it past the drawn in infield to give the Nats the insurance they were looking for. It's now four to one Washington. This is what Rendon does well that I like. Fastball in. This is a good pitch. And he just stays level and compact. Here, the, the rear view right there. It's a clutching out right there. Wants it away. Where is it? Inner half running in. He just stays right there. That's just good hitting. That's two base hits up the middle that have provided three runs for the Nats. Wilson Ramos had the first one. That provided the second Washington run in the fourth inning. Well, both those runs charged to Jerry Blevins, first runs he's been charged with in his last 10 outings. And huge ones. Gives Mark Lance on a cushion for his save chance in the bottom of the ninth. That's are due to send up Flores, Granderson, and Johnson. And the task much tougher now. Chris Heisey is out on deck to pinch hit with the pitcher spot due up next. Still nobody out. And that's lined over short, a base hit for Ramos. So four straight hits for the Nationals to start this ninth inning. Into the fastball and it's in. And he's quick in. It's good hitting run. Yeah, to be playing every day as a catcher and have a couple hits in this game hitting over 300. Quite an accomplishment for Ramos. Gabriel Lanoa gets up in the Mets bullpen as this game starts to leak away. Did you offer me some of that, whatever it is you're eating? Those eating Hershey candy, little, little, little. Those, those sound really good. I'm sorry, I should have had a <laughs> cough button on. Did you hear him really? I was had my mouth closed. <laughs> Here's Heisey, the pinch hitter. Let's see if he's asked to bunt here. That's already up four to one. That's not looking for the bunt, and he does. At least indicate he might. I, I think he's going to swing away. He's a home run hitter off the bench. Yep, sure is. And he takes a strike. Heisey and Bruce were teammates for many seasons in Cincinnati. A little bit of the air taken out of this game. This was the game in the series that appeared to tilt the Mets way in terms of the pitching matchup with Syndergaard against A.J. Cole who's in line for his first big league win. That's popped up infield fly roll if it's fair. Reyes along the line catches it in foul territory for the first down. The next two nights stack up as very difficult assignments. Mets face Tanner Roark tomorrow night with Robert Gazelman on the mound. And they face Max Scherzer Sunday night with Seth Lugo going. Yeah. We say him, they play him. City Probables. And you see Roark and Scherzer both having tremendous years. That's why you're saying this game you had to win and then you kind of try to split with the next two. You know, we've talked a lot in the last few days about the fact that the Mets have the lightest schedule of all the wildcard teams but they still have these six games with the Nats right. and this was the first of the six 
outside of that it is a fairly light schedule against a lot of as Keith would say second division teams. <laughs> got two series left with the Braves two series with the Phillies the series in Cincinnati the series at home against Minnesota. Yeah. All of those are fourth and fifth place teams. Gary follow that St. Louis Cincinnati game. I think the Reds two, two have bottom of the ninth. The Reds have two on and nobody out against the final boss. Oh. So they brought him into a tie game on the road. <laughs> That's interesting. So one oh. Cardinals closer. Well, Robles had the good outing the last time out against Miami, but the recent overall number is not good at all. Espinosa is over three tonight. And he has to move his feet on that fastball. Bearing it on one and one. Check the count, it's two and out. Oh. Rendon at second, Ramos at first with one out. And Espinosa pulls it down to first. Flores gets the out at second, no relay. So they get the force on Ramos for the second out. And now runners at the corners with two out. That was a good no throw by Cabrera. Robles was late to get over there. So it really would have, he would have had to catch that on the run. Good choice. And Espinosa gets down the line pretty well. Much Robles. See that delay? Yep. That delay is enough. Cost that's you. That's all it takes. And you can't throw to a running target right now. <clears throat> Trying to keep this at a three run deficit. So now Ryan Zimmerman will bat for the second time. What does he look different with a beard? I just grew that recently. It's like a whole different guy. Trying something different, right? Yeah, he hit 217. Why not? Yeah, that's the Ryan we know. Struck out looking his only at bat in this game against Fernando Salas in the eighth. Salas looked good again, a scoreless inning, but Levins and Robles finding trouble here in the ninth. After Syndergaard went the first seven, Noah allowed just two runs and three hits, but the four stolen bases were key, and that may be enough to beat him tonight. Now his ERA stayed just about the same, went from 2.55 to 2.56. Rendon at third, Espinosa at first with two out. And Zimmerman takes one off the plate. One and one. Miami has lost. Cleveland six, Miami two is a final. So the Mets will stay in front of the Marlins in the wild card standings. They were a game in front of them coming into the day. Slider off the plate, two and one. The Pittsburgh's batting in the bottom of the ninth, down one nothing to Milwaukee. They have one on and one out. Cincinnati's still batting in the bottom of the ninth, two two with the Cardinals. They have two on and one out. Right here, Robles trying to get through this ninth inning, which has not been kind to the Mets bullpen. Another slider. That's one catches the corner, and it's two and two. Good pitch by Hansel to get even in the count. Two two coming to Zimmerman. Spinoza dives back in.
Now the 2 2. Espinosa runs and several mid fouls are back. 97 for World Bless. Well, the Nationals running from the beginning to the end. That's right. Trey Turner in the first inning stole second and third and scored the first run of this game against Syndergaard, and the Nats have been in front ever since. Two two coming and a foul tip held by Darno strike three. So the inning comes to an end but a damaging one for the Mets as the Nats had two insurance runs driven in by Rendon four to one going to the bottom of the ninth. Nationals four Mets one Mets just got good news on the scoreboard the Cardinals and the Pirates have both lost the Marlins lost earlier and so the Mets will lose no ground to the teams in front of them in the wild card race as Ooh. they try and rally against Mark Melanson Look at Ooh, those Austin. numbers Melanson has had the most saves in the last three seasons by any relief pitcher in baseball. Melanson acquired at the trading deadline and a deal that sent. Felipe Rivero to the Pirates. Alejandro de Azu will bat for Wilmer Flores leading off in the last of the night. Retired 39 of the 46 batters he's faced so far as a national. A little surprise. Pinch hitting for Wilmer. Hmm. Lanson who relies heavily on a cut fastball. That has become his stock in trade. Which he didn't have when he got to the big leagues. He got it once he was in the Yankee bullpen and was tutored under Mariano Rivera. He's got a good overhand curveball, too. He's a good pitcher. That's yeah, what he, he is. is. That's what he is. Curtis Granderson on deck, then Kelly Johnson against Melanson. As the Mets try and make some noise in the ninth, and Deaza pops one up into no man's land, but it oh. falls for a base hit. Not much of an effort by Trey Turner to get to that ball. And so Deaz is aboard. I thought at one point that Turner was going to get there, but he just kind of pulled up. He pulled up because he realized Gary he wasn't going to get there. Are you sure? I th either he had to lose it uh, because that just uh, wasn't the proper play. With that doesn't. kind of speed, you can run in and maybe die for that ball. So that's have a little life in the ninth inning. Their fourth hit of the night, a pinch hit single for Deaza. And now Granderson is 0 for 3. 
Flight out, popped up, struck out. Nats need one more base runner to get the tying run to the plate. Boy, do those two runs that Nats scored in the top of the ninth look huge right now. A little cutter, back door for a strike. Granderson has some success in limited at bats against Melanson. Two for five with a home run. Left side of the infield open. It's got to be tough against a guy with a good cutter to think opposite field, though. Right? Yeah, he's, he's trying to um, cut that ball right inside on Granderson. You got to get me over one for a strike. But with the infield shifted over, he wants him to hit something to the right side if he puts it in play. Kelly Johnson standing on deck. And Granderson hits one off the fist. Melanson drops the ball, but Deaza was going back to the bag and they get the force play. Nothing he can do about yeah. that. Nothing you can do. So it simply goes as a fielder's choice after Melanson on a ball hit over his head got a glove on it and couldn't hold it. By the way he might have had a double play if he caught it. See where Deaza is. I mean, there's nothing he could do though. I mean he's just a no, no man's land. Five six fielder's choice for the first out of the inning. So Granderson is on and now Kelly Johnson who's flied out and struck out twice tonight. Kelly's one for five in his career against Melanson. Pitcher spot is due up next. Michael Conforto on deck to pinch it. And a good cut by Kelly as he fouls it back. Mark Melanson set up for Jason Grilly at first in Pittsburgh, then took over the closers role. And he has been among the elite closers in the game the last three years. One and one to Johnson. Lanson trying to save it for A.J. Cole and get Cole his first big league win. Cole went six innings to not allow one run, three hits. Wasn't overpowering, but was very impressive. That's a match, just four hits all night long. It's two young pitchers and two nights, right? Now we'll say Urania, a different kind of pitcher, hard thrower. He was very impressive last night. Missed it earlier. Jacob deGrom had an MRI on his forearm today. Inflammation, medication, probably will miss a start. Who knows after that? In the air to right field, and Harper cutting in. That's the second out. So that means I would assume the Mets will bring back Rafael Montero. He was good enough in that start on Monday that he certainly deserves another shot at that place in the rotation. I thought he threw the ball pretty well despite the six walks. I thought he had a pretty sharp breaking ball through harder than I've seen him throw Garrett. See that spot in the rotation will come up Tuesday. Montero will not have been in the minors for 10 days but the minor league season will be over. That's so right. You can still call him up. So that shouldn't be a problem. So the Mets are down to their final out. And Conforto will try and keep things going. Michael started last night and his return from the minor leagues went one for three and it doubled his first time up last night and hit the ball consistently to left center. He had the one he hit for the double and the one he hit that was dropped by Yelich for an error. And the one frustrating at bat in a huge spot in the eighth inning bases loaded hit the comebacker into a double play when the Mets were trying to rally. Mets have only managed four hits in this game. 
And Lanson hasn't thrown anything but his cutter so far. If Conforto can keep it going, Travis Darno would be next. Hitting in the number nine hole. And the no. curveball. So there's something else. That's nasty. Drop 12 to 6. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's two pipe references, by the way. Corn cob? <laughs> that was a good pitch. <laughs> so now the Mets are now their final strike. One and two to Conforto. Granderson runs, Conforto grounds it to Murphy. And that'll do it. The Nationals take the opening game of the series. Noah Syndergaard gave up four stolen bases. That was enough. He only allowed two runs over seven innings, but A.J. Cole gets his first major league win, and the Nationals beat the Mets for the tenth time in 14 tries this year, four to one. Well, I tell you what, it was just the, the ninth inning when they caught, scored the two runs, the Nationals. They had their three and four hitter up. The big guys, Murphy and Harper. Murphy led off with an opposite field single, followed by an opposite field double that set up the big inning for Rendon to drive in those two key insurance runs in the ninth inning. A well played ball game. This young kid, Cole, just pitched a better game than Syndergaard here. You, you know, Syndergaard uh, pitched a good game, but he wasn't able to manage the running game, something he hasn't been able to do all year against the Nationals. So the Nats win it. Mets don't lose any ground to their wild card competitors. Stay two games behind the Cardinals as they drop the opening game of the series. Tonight's game summary presented by Jeep. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep now celebrating its 75th anniversary by the Jet Blue card by Cholula on Capriol flavor your favorite foods with the delicious taste of Cholula hot sauce. Try all five unique flavors including green pepper. By New York State Health Department, talk with your doctor for help quitting smoking or call 1-866-NY-QUITS. And by the Better Network, Verizon, Better Matters. Final score tonight, the Nationals four and the Mets one. Game two of this series tomorrow night. Robert Gazelman gets the start for the Mets against Tanner Roark. Our coverage begins tomorrow night at 6 o'clock right here on SNY. Now for Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling, Steve Gelbs, and our entire SNY crew. I'm Gary Cohen at City Field. Time for WB Mason Post Game Live. Let's join CJ Papa and Jim Duquette in the studio, guys.